because of your love for God and to show that you're a child of God because that's the way he treats us. How many of you, God was good to you before you were good to be good to? If this is your first session here, I've been teaching the book of Ephesians, and um, it's a wonderful book in the Bible. It's a, it's a well-rounded book that gives us not only great teaching about who we are in Christ, but then because of who we are in Christ and what he's done for us, it then teaches us how we then ought to behave in light of what Jesus has done for us. And I can never say this enough, so I'm going to say it again. You're not saved by good behavior. Being a Christian is not just about trying to modify your behavior, but if you develop a great relationship with God through Christ, you receive him, you spend time with him, you study the word, you learn to do life with God. I love that phrase. We're not just going to church on Sunday morning. We are doing life with God. We want him involved in everything that we do. He loves you. You're forgiven. He's merciful. You have an inheritance. You're a joint heir with Christ. All the wonderful things in chapters 1, 2, and 3. Then chapter 4 says, therefore. <laughs> therefore, because of all this good stuff that God has done for us, now we should live with behavior that is a credit to God's service. And so then in chapter four, we found 16 different points and behaviors <laughs> that we were told to be careful not to get into. And of course, we can't just decide that we're gonna behave well. You have to lean on God all the way through. Then in chapter five, we talked about some more of those things. And now we are at the point that some of you are gonna groan and some of you are going to rejoice because we are at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. So I might as well just get this part over with so we can get on to some better stuff. Because it says, Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. I'm good with that. If we're all submitting to each other, that I can handle. And I do want to make a point before I read the rest of it that that is the first thing he says. That we should all submit one to another. And that's true. I mean, even like, you know, you come in here, you need to be willing to submit to the authority in here at this conference. If I would come somewhere where you were doing something, then I would need to be willing to submit to what you wanted done in that place. And the world today is filled with rebellion. Nobody wants anybody telling them anything. But you know what the Bible says in Thessalonians? That rebellion is the spirit of Antichrist. Yes, rebellion is the spirit of Antichrist. And so we have to be very careful about these attitudes that we can develop toward authority or we don't want anybody telling us what to do. And this is not about somebody pushing you around or running your life. It's about decency and order because surely we all know that in every situation, every single person can't be in charge of what's going on. If you do that, then you got chaos. So he starts out, be subject one to another. I, I particularly like the writings, and I've read a lot by a man named Watchman Nee, a, a wonderful Chinese Christian. Anybody ever read any of his, his stuff? He's just, I mean, if you want to get into some stuff that's deep, go get a few of his books. You know, you may not agree with everything he says, but there's a lot of really great stuff in them. And he's written a great book on spiritual authority. And he says that any person, your first obligation when you walk into a room is to look around and decide who's in charge and make a decision that you're gonna come under that authority. Hmm. Well, we're all excited already, aren't we? <laughs> I'm gonna need my friend down here to help me. He's still clapping, thank God. <laughs> we do realize, don't we, that the rebellious attitude that the world has is not right.
Thank you. Thank you. Then it says, wives, be subject, be submissive, and adapt yourselves to your own husbands. <laughs> I tell you, Dave was so excited about this part today. And it says, and do it as a service to the Lord. Now, you know, that makes it more palatable for me. Because honestly and truly, there are things that you will do because of your love for God and because he asked you to that might be difficult to do otherwise. To be honest with you, I don't think anybody wants somebody else telling them what to do. We'd all rather just do our own thing. But we need to come to the point where we are willing to do absolutely anything that God wants us to do. Now, Dave would tell you if I would let him come up here, but we don't have time for Dave today. <laughs> Dave would tell you that I am a submissive wife. Right? Now, you know, I got plenty of spunk, and I got a mouth, and uh, I make a lot of decisions, and, but I'll tell you the truth, if it comes down to doing something that I would prefer not to do, because that's what Dave really wants to do, I will do it because that's what I know God wants me to do, and it keeps peace in our home, and I believe it's the right and the godly thing to do. Now, the other side of that is to the husbands. For the... <laughs> You notice how quiet the women got on 22 and well now they're shouting. I'll tell you something funny that happened this morning. God always gives me stories to tell. I was sitting and studying and I hurt my back a little bit last week so I've been having to be careful with it and I was sitting in a chair where I had my feet propped up and Dave thought that was hurting my back so he suggested I sit somewhere else and that was a couple days ago so then I was sitting out there today, and he said, how's your back? I said, it's been doing pretty good, and I had my, my legs crossed. I sit like that a lot, and he said, you know, you probably shouldn't cross your legs, and I'm sitting there studying on wives be submissive to your husband, and I said, wait, and I said, you know, Dave, you really can't run my life. <laughs> so if you don't need this, I'll just preach to myself today, amen? <laughs> now, Dave and I kid each other a lot, but I, I have to do a lot of things because I love God, not necessarily because it's the most fun thing for me to do. So that's the point that I need to make with you. Now it says, now husbands, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. <laughs> Don't forget that second part, guys. As Christ is the head of the church, the Savior of his body. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, and I love this part, and gave himself up for her. Now, you will notice, men, that this is talking about sacrifice. Jesus gave his life up for the church, and this says that a woman should submit to her husband, but he should love her as Christ loved the church, sacrificing for her. And I can tell you, if this is all working right, it's beautiful. If it's all working right, it's beautiful. However, most of us know from experience that we've had lots of times where it didn't work right. And so usually by the time we come into relationships, we've already got our mind made up that nobody's gonna tell us what to do and nobody's gonna push us around and nobody's gonna run our life. And so we've already got a wrong mindset before we ever even get started. And a lot of times we're making this person here pay for what somebody over here did, and we don't even really give this person an opportunity to see how they would handle themselves because we've already decided that we're not going to put up with it. And I know because my dad sexually abused me, I watched my, my dad mistreat my mother. I mean, he would go out every Saturday night and get drunk and make her lay his clothes out. 
knowing that he was going to go out and be with other women. He'd come home drunk in the middle of the night, ranting and raving and make her get up and cook him something to eat. And she just cowered under that and, and just did it. Well, I just got so like, yeah. And I made my mind up. Nobody was ever going to push me around like that. And because he was abusing me, nobody was ever going to abuse me again. Then I married the first guy that came along at 18, and he was a mess. He ran around with other women all the time and didn't work, and I was supporting us half the time. And so that's not the way it's supposed to be either. The Bible, how can a woman be expected to submit to a man if she can't respect him? And how can she, how can she respect him if he doesn't, you know, you're not the man of the house if you don't really act like the man of the house. You know, and being the man of the house doesn't mean you just boss everybody around. It means that you take care of things. You're responsible. You do what needs to be done. You get out. You work. You put your family first. You're a, you're a good parent. And so I'll just tell you, we've got a mess going on in the world that I'm certainly not smart enough to solve. All I can do is try to share with you what I believe God has taught me, and, and hopefully it'll help us make some progress in these areas. And so then he goes on to say, um, let's just look at verse 28. Even so, husbands should love their wives as being, in a sense, their own body. He who loves his own body loves himself. Verse 32 says, this mystery is great. And I thought, yeah, it's great, all right, you know. <laughs> Says a man. <laughs> well, they got that part right. Verse 31, it says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and the two shall become one. I let, it's the becoming part that we miss. It's like you leave your father and mother, and it takes the rest of your life to become one. Now, you know, Dave and I get along great now, but I'll tell you what, we, we went through some stuff in the beginning, and a lot of it was just my rebellion. I didn't want anybody to tell me what to do. Dave actually really was one of the ones that would have been really good to me, but I didn't even know how to let anybody love me because I brought all my junk from my past hurts into that relationship, and I was trying to make him pay for what other people had done to me. And so I'm just encouraging you, if you've been hurt in the past, try not to bring your baggage into a new relationship and try to make somebody else pay for what somebody back here did to you. You say, well, I'm afraid. Well, put your trust in God. A godly marriage is a great mystery because it represents Christ's relationship with the church. Now, I understand if it's difficult for you, but I also understand that no matter how difficult things are, we still need to do what God asks us to do. Now, you know, Dave and I don't agree about a lot of things, and, and uh, we talk things through, and a lot of times if we don't, can't make a decision we both agree on, then if it's something we don't have to make a decision on, we just won't make any decision for a while. We'll just wait on it, just let it sit for a while and wait on it, give God a chance to change somebody else's mind. But if it comes to, preferably Dave's, if it comes, <laughs> if it comes down to a decision having to be made, then because I love God, and because the Bible says that I should do it as unto the Lord, even if I don't think it's what we should do, I will let him do it because here's what I believe. And I want you to get this part of this message today. If you do what's right, God will always take care of you. If you do what's right, this is, serving God is not about doing what I want to do. It's about doing what God asked me to do because I love him and I want to honor and glorify him. And things are just not going to work right in our lives if we don't go back to some of these wonderful principles that are in the Word of God. We don't have the privilege of doing whatever the world does because that's what the world is doing. And don't worry, the whole message is not going to be about submission to authority. <laughs> just a little bit more. Can you take a little bit more? All right. So, then... Well, I might as well read verse 33 in the Amplified. However, let each man of you without exception love his wife as being in a sense his very own self and let the wife see that she respects, reverences, notices, 
regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates him, esteems him, and that she defers to him, praises him, loves and admires him exceedingly. I actually found an old notebook of mine. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? <laughs> Sounds good to you, right? Yeah. I found an old notebook back from like in the 80s where I was studying and God was trying to get me to do this stuff and I was just fighting tooth and nail. And I found that scripture one day and I'm thinking, I don't even know what half of this means. And I wrote down every one of those words and looked up the definition for it in the dictionary and I've still got that on note paper. I wanted to obey God, but I was having a hard time doing it because of where I came from. I didn't really have a rebellious spirit. I was afraid to trust anybody because anybody I had ever trusted that had authority over me hurt me. How many of you know that's, that can certainly be the case in a lot of situations? Amen? But thank God I made it. And I'm actually, I'm actually pretty sweet now. I told Dave this morning, I might be sugar-free sweet, but I'm sweet. <laughs> Sometimes I'll get a little feisty and he'll say, there's my girl. <laughs> All right, now, verses 1 through 9 in chapter 6. And actually, you have to understand that Paul didn't break all this up in chapters. This was one long letter. So the part that ends with all this stuff about husbands and wives goes right into children obey your parents and the Lord as his representative, for this is just and right. Honor, esteem, and value as precious your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that all may go well with you and you may live long on the earth. Now I want to say a little bit about that. If you have parents, you're no longer living at home, and you don't ever pay any attention to your parents, you don't go see them, you don't call them, you don't ever do anything for them, then you need to really think over what God says about how to treat your parents. And it's not a good enough excuse to say, well, my parents didn't treat me right. Mine abused me, and the time came when God said, I want you to take care of them and take care of them well until they die. And it cost a lot of money, and it cost a lot of time, and it wasn't something that I wanted to do, but we don't have to want to do everything that we do. We do it as unto the Lord. Amen? Amen? And, you know, this, this is, it's very important to me that you get this part. If your parents were dishonorable, you may not have all the gooey feelings toward them that you would like to have, but, you, but love is not about how we feel. It's about what we decide to do as far as how we treat people. Come on, I've been preaching a lot this weekend. So we're to do these things as a service to the Lord. Now let me say again, if you do what's right because it's right and because you want to honor God, now listen to me, God will always take care of you. He will always take care of you. We don't get to be good to people because they're good people. <laughs> we're going to look at Matthew 5, 44 through 47 for a second. We'll put it up on the screens for you. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you <laughs> to show that you are the children of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the wicked and on the good, and he makes the rain fall upon the upright and the wrongdoers. For if you love those who love you, what reward can you have? Do not even the tax collectors do that. And if you greet your brethren, what more than others are you doing? Do not even the Gentiles and the heathens do that. <laughs> so he's saying, you don't get to be good to people just because they're nice people and they're good to be good to. You do it because of your love for God and to show that you're a child of God because that's the way he treats us. How many of you, God was good to you before you were good to be good to? And still is.
Okay, verse um, six. Not in the way of eye service as if they were watching you and only to please men, but as servants and slaves of Christ, doing the will of God heartily and with all your whole soul, rendering service readily with goodwill as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that for whatever good anyone does, he will receive his reward from the Lord, whether he is slave or free. So you've got a reward coming if you're doing what's right. Doing what's right is a protection on your life. It slams every door in the devil's face. Did you hear me? It slams every door in the devil's face if you do what's right. Verse 9, it talks about, I mean, this talks about how children should submit to their parents. Parents should not take their angry, undue chastisements out on their kids. Any of you ever have a bad day and take it out on your kids? Yeah, well, four, that's good. We got a lot of holy people here today. <laughs> Let me read you something that was in a, a commentary that I read on Ephesians. He said, you'll notice how these verses talk about submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. This is a principle of Christian living which applies to believers in every relationship of life. And now that the Apostle Paul turns to consider the Christian family, he shows that it even needs to apply there. Now listen to this. Did you ever stop to think what a wonderful institution the Christian family is? In reading a letter from a missionary who was working in a heathen land, I was stuck by this struck by this paragraph that he wrote. This missionary wrote this letter. How we wish that some of our Christian people could come and settle down among us even if not to engage in missionary work, there are different ways by which one may make his living among these semi-civilized people. For instance, we, we would like to have a Christian dentist and his wife, or a Christian worker in leather, a shoemaker, a harness maker, and his wife and family. Now listen, it would mean a great deal to us to have a harmonious family here for we can conceive of nothing that could so commend Christianity to our people as just to see a Christian family functioning according to the New Testament. He's saying that there is no better testimony to the world of Christianity than to just witness a Christian family, moms, dads, children, husbands, wives, working together in society and behaving themselves as Christians. Isn't that amazing? You know what the bottom line is? If we'd all get out and act like what we say we are, it wouldn't be very long and Jesus could come and get us and we could get out of this mess. Well, be intentional with your pursuit of God. Make a commitment to the one who can meet all of your needs. There's a lot more in this chapter that you don't want to miss out on. So please take advantage of today's offer. The Ephesians Action Plan. It's six teachings on DVD and CD. The study guide and the whole book of Ephesians that we've put into a special little booklet for you. You can carry it around with you. You can read it over and over. I think you're going to really enjoy these resources. And you know what? This would be a great gift to give someone that you know loves to study the Bible or wants to study. It's also great for home group Bible studies. So I think this is going to be very valuable. Enjoy your day and thank you for being with us. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. For a limited time, we're offering a Bible study of Ephesians action plan. Joyce teaches the entire book with you. If I study your word, the word has the power to change me. I can't change me, you can change me. Inside the action plan is a personal study guide. Then we've included the letter of Paul to the Ephesians and six teachings on CD and DVD. Answer the questions, take notes, and journal what God shows you through this study. 
These helps will walk you through each chapter verse by verse. It's like doing a Bible study together with Joyce. Get it for your personal study or group. All this can be yours for a donation of $35 or more. Call us, 1-800-727-9673, or visit us at JoyceMeyer.org. You know, every day of our life is a gift from God, but how are you spending that gift? Are you letting life just happen, or are you pursuing God's best? In my book, Seize the Day, I want to stir you up to take your life back and teach you how to live every day on purpose for a purpose. Seize the day. Order your copy right now. Call us right now, toll free, 1-800-727-9673 or visit JoyceMeyer.org. You know, I've just been wondering lately, what is it that makes a person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. Seeing the world is awesome. It's always a great adventure. Because the kids are so amazing. I do this because God put it in my heart to help others. Because it's life changing. We love it. It's awesome. Because it's really fun. So what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today.